Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Scorpio for June 2014. So if Scorpio is your sun sign, or Scorpio is your rising sign, or your moon sign, then this is for you. Check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, or click on the link below this video to see more about my personal readings. Um, also, to sign up for my free email newsletter where I send out um, a month-ahead written astrological um, highlight newsletter, as well as some other things throughout the month. Um, and, yeah, so check that out. Okay, so what's up for Scorpio for June? Well, for everybody in June, Mercury is going to be in retrograde. So we're going to be very much dominated by the Mercury retrograde experience in all of the different ways that that can manifest. Definitely check out my uh, video on Mercury retrograde specifically because there are certain general implications of Mercury retrograde that I won't go into in each of the videos. But you can always go back to that each retrograde cycle to remember what are the basic things to avoid, what are the basic things to focus on. You know, there are some general implications that are always going to be true. Now, each time Mercury goes retrograde when it's in a different sign, then that brings additional um, implications generally for everyone. And depending on what houses it's retrograde in, in the solar chart, that brings additional implications. So for Scorpio, the houses that are predominantly highlighted in general for the month of June are the 7th, 8th, and 9th houses. Now, the 7th and 8th houses are the two partnership houses in the chart. And those, um, they have some differences between them, but there are some similarities between them. But we can safely say that for all Scorpios, there's going to be a very strong focus on relationship. So that can come through any one-on-one -on -one relationship with um, a romantic partner, business, clients, people that you know, friends, any kind of group, one-on-one -on -one relationships of any kind, going to be a strong focus. And that is both from the perspective of um, these re the retrograde is going to bring um, very, very uh, much introspection and also just general focus on um, those houses. And then the new moon is also going to bring some additional lines of energy for those houses. So, um, and for the early degree Scorpios, there's some additional new moon focus and additional retrograde focus on the ninth house. So we can say that for the earlier degree Scorpios, there's more energy towards the ninth house potentials. For later degree um, Scorpios, there's more emphasis on the seventh house potentials. And for all Scorpios, there are potentials in the seventh, eighth, and ninth house. Now, to better understand that, I want to bring one of my um, beloved uh, food analogies. When I was growing up, um, I had two Italian grandparents, on one on each, either side, one that lived with me for a while. And food is a very big focus for Italian people. <laughs> and so, for some reason, I always bring astrological understandings back to understanding food because I see astrological signs as ingredients in a person pie. And so to understand these energetic potentials of 7th, 8th, and ninth houses, which we'll talk about what those houses represent more, but why some of the um, Scorpios might have more probability for certain experiences and other ones might have more probability for others and all of them have the potential for these certain range. Um, okay, so before I get to the food thing, I want to talk about something I was listening to with Deepak Chopra. Deepak Chopra has a series called Journey to the Boundless. I'm thinking it's available still. I had it, I got it from a book sale on tape, so it's pretty old school. But he was talking about how we're a wellspring of infinite possibilities and I believe that. Now, within the astrological um, charts for a person and the astrological transits in general, the transits and the placements in the chart bring the infinite potentials into probabilities. Okay, so we're talking about possibilities and probabilities. When we're looking at the horoscope for the month, there are probabilities of focus on certain fields of experience. And those 
ranges of probability increase in percentage depending on different factors. So that's why there is generally a lot of resonance with astrological horoscopes because you have more of a probability being a certain sign of certain fields of experience being highlighted for you. Okay. Now, um, so let's imagine that well, I'm I've been talking this month about my sexy peach pie recipe that I created one summer. And in the sexy peach pie recipe, there is some cayenne. And there's also cardamom. And there are also peaches. Okay, so all Scorpios are going to taste the peaches in that pie. And that peach energy represents relationship energy. So for all Scorpios, anyone who eats that pie, they're going to have something going on with their relationships of any kind. For the later degree Scorpios, they might taste more of that cardamom. So we'll put the cardamom in the seventh house. Okay, so you know when you eat a piece of pie, you taste different things than other people do sometimes. So people don't know what cardamom is. They don't know what it tastes like, whatever. So the, the, um, the later degree Scorpios are going to more likely taste some more of that seventh house cardamom. And the earlier degree Scorpios are going to more likely taste more of that um, cayenne. Okay, but all Scorpios have the chance to taste any of the ingredients. There's just more of a probability depending on these lineups and the angle of your chart, which is determined by the degree of your sign to um, taste certain things or to have certain taste of certain experiences. Okay, so now with all that being said, when Mercury goes retrograde in the partnership houses, specifically the eighth house, which is a focus for all Scorpios, you will be, um, many of you are going to either question, revisit, or have a different experience of your deep relationships. Now, this can include in-laws. Eighth house rules in-laws because these are people that you marry into. They can also, it also rules your own family because these are people you have deep resource connections with. So many of you are going to be around your in-laws. Some of you are going to see the same things that you've always seen, for better or worse. And, but the retrospective process, the retrograde process, can help you to see some other things, some other aspects of these people, again, for better or worse, that maybe you haven't seen. It's a, it's a deepening of going back into certain things. So this can be for in-laws, in-law relationships. This can be for debt. You might um, have something that you owed or allegedly owed people come back to you in this time to be dealt with, or you might feel inclined to deal with those things. Um, this also has to do with deep esoteric studies. The eighth house rules investigation. So it can, this can bring up actual investigation, like an investigation, a legal investigation, or um, some other investigative project, or just deep research into studies. So if you um, are inclined to study such things, taking classes during this time of the end of May, all of June, and the first half of July, you will get much, 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 much um, from classes or things that you study involving deep esoteric topics during this time. Now, this also obviously has to do with the topics of power and money, since Scorpio is very directly um, related to that. So now, Scorpios in general have this as a theme focus for their lives because of the sun sign or rising sign or moon sign. But during this retrograde cycle, where the retrograde process is taking place mostly in the eighth house, which rules the sign of Scorpio, this brings more of a focus to the questions of power, the questions and topics of money and sharing power and sharing money, and also the topics of deep intimacy Many Scorpios are going to question their relationships as it relates to deep intimacy. And also, some of you will have a restored or deepening intimacy in your relationship. So some of you will be questioning your relationship and evaluating it based on these topics of money, power, sex, intimacy. And some of you will be experiencing a renewed experience of um, intimacy with your partner. So... That's cool. Um, so the earlier degree 
Scorpios having s stronger energy of this new moon in the ninth house will have the possibility for new studies or new travel or new publishing projects. If you have wanted to make your entrance into the um, global arena, I always highly recommend YouTube, obviously. Only half of my viewers are in my country, the United States. YouTube is hands down the best way to connect to the global community, period. And if you have been looking into this for yourself, either for a hobby or a spiritual mission or your work or all of the above, then June is an amazing time for you to make progress on this, but not in the way of launching, because Mercury retrograde is not a great time for launching. But let's say you're a Scorpio who has amazing mastery of the tarot, which Scorpios would tend to do because of the deep way that, the deep penetrating way that they um, do things. So if you have been wanting to, let's say, make some offerings um, of, of your work or of the study of deep esoteric studies, you can start to script recordings or you can start to lay out what you might want to record or you can um, actually do recordings or podcasts or blogs or anything like that. But wait until July, in the middle of July, to launch these things. But this is a great time for asking the questions, putting together things, trying to tie together what you're going to offer to people. Now, all of that of what I just said is also true for anything involving um, other people's money. So many people use their Scorpio energy in a way that specifically relates to money or to power. So political topics or anything related to power. Empowerment, if you're wanting to empower people in any way. This retrograde process is going to be very deeply looking at your own empowerment, how you empower people, how you disempower people, how you enable people, and how you can stop doing that. <laughs> um, there's something else I wanted to talk about. That. Um, oh, so like stock stockbrokers, people who manage people, money managers, are also that's very much a Scorpio energy. Um, I have seen people over the course of their lives have who have strong Scorpio in their chart. Maybe at some point they started out working with people's money or interested in people's money. Then as they were introduced to a spiritual topic and deep esoteric subjects, they moved over to this focus on these other things or vice versa because it rules the same thing. But in any case, June is fantastic for all of these things. If you are trying to investigate where you're going to invest money, this is a great time for researching people who you might want to manage your money or places that you might want to invest your money in. I wouldn't necessarily recommend, unless there's a strong intuitive calling or something very obvious, actually making the investments in June because you don't have all of the information yet until closer to the middle of July, but it's a great time to look into these things. So um, now bringing that back to this, this new moon in the ninth house. So if you are a Scorpio who has been thinking about all of these things because of the nature of yourself and the transit of Mercury, and then these publishing or broadcasting opportunities come from this new moon, then hold off on your launch until July. That was my point for all of that. Okay, so for your later degree, um, Scorpios, where the focus is on relationships, from the seventh house perspective, then if you have old, old previous clients, go back to stuff involving your previous clients. So um, let's say, again, we'll just talk about if you're wanting to launch a new product. And that can be something esoteric. That can be something in money management. That can be something in empowering people. Going back over your old client lists or old connections, because this retrograde process is in the seventh house, um, for the later degree Scorpios, that can be very beneficial. Now, for all Scorpios, doing this is beneficial. But again, back with the flavors. Um, the late degree Scorpios will have more of a leaning towards this. So hopefully this retrograde process will find you all with better understanding of um, your relationships from the evaluation. 
it will uh, provide you with hopefully more intimacy and getting closer to the things you want in relationship. I can help you have better relationships. This is one of my departments. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, or click on the link below this video to see more about my personal readings. I have sliding scale options for readings with me and different options to try to make my work as accessible to people as possible. So check that out and sign up for my free email newsletter and have a fabulous June.